Microsoft joins Google, Amazon, YouTube, and OpenAI in major AI product announcements this week. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. What an absolutely massive week for AI product announcements. And as you've heard me discuss a couple times, this week wasn't really a story about new technology, although there is one exception to that. Instead, it was a week that showed that the next phase of artificial intelligence is likely to be an integration phase, in which AI tools start to find their way into the workflows that we already use, into the software that we already use, and in so doing likely reaches a much larger audience than it does today. Now, the big announcement yesterday was that Microsoft is expanding its Copilot AI Assistant across the entire Windows operating system. In their announcement post, they write, We are entering a new era of AI, one that is fundamentally changing how we relate to and benefit from technology. At Microsoft, we think about this as having a co-pilot to help navigate any task. We have been building AI-powered co-pilots into our most used and loved products, and today we take the next step to unify these capabilities into a single experience we call Microsoft Copilot, your everyday AI companion. Copilot, they say, integrates the context and intelligence of the web, the user's work data, and whatever they happen to be doing at that moment on their computer to provide a better assistant experience. Basically, this is a big step towards an AI-powered operating system, and it's coming really soon. This is going to begin rolling out as part of a free update to Windows 11 that starts on Tuesday, September 26th. Now, this was not all they announced at this event. They also discussed some new computers, including updates to their Surface line. But as Tom Warren from The Verge said, So this was a co-pilot event with a side of Windows and Surface. The initial response was fairly positive. Linus Ekenstam tweeted, Always on AI everywhere in Windows. This is the tightest operating system integration with AI that we have ever seen. Microsoft is showing how it's done. How many wrapper startups will struggle now? Now, there are two parts about this that I think are pretty interesting. First of all, one of the things that I've seen people get more excited about recently than anything else is Open Interpreter. Open Interpreter is a terminal-based interface that's effectively like having Code Interpreter from ChatGPT run on your computer accessing all of your files. Now, part of why people got so excited about Open Interpreter is that I think it showed a vision of a future in which a chat-based natural language control system becomes the dominant way that you interact with your computer versus having to learn a specific set of controls and clicks and shortcuts. In other words, the idea that, as Linus says, this is the tightest operating system integration with AI we have ever seen is a really significant precedent for the future. The second piece, of course, that he mentions is this idea of how many wrapper startups will struggle now. This has been a big theme throughout the year, where companies that are effectively just building off of someone else's API, often open AIs, are struggling to provide enough value in a differentiated user experience to be a going concern in the long run. In a world where the big tech platforms and the big software companies are all integrating their AI natively, just having a different interface is an insufficient way to differentiate for a startup. Now, one other AI announcement that was in here was that Dolly 3, which was also announced by OpenAI this week, will be integrated directly into Bing. It's another really smart way that Microsoft is leveraging its relationship with OpenAI to try to create enough value to get users to come over to their systems. Now, of course, the other side of the conversation was represented here by Nick St. Pierre, who said, I don't care how many AI features and updates Microsoft announces today, I'm still never switching to PC. And as much as Nick was joking around for the sake of Twitter, you have to think that this is what market analysts are actually going to be asking themselves. Can Microsoft's differentiation around AI actually change consumer behaviors? On that front, I had to laugh at this thread from Rafael Rivera, who took a screenshot of a demo that Microsoft actually did at this event, in which they were running an LLM locally on one of their new Surface laptops, and said, Microsoft leadership signed off on this Windows app for today's forward-looking AI and hardware event. What slash how the actual app? Basically, it's an extremely awkward, uncomfortable, and ugly-looking window with mismatched fonts, no clear visual hierarchy. It just basically sums up all of the worst of what people think when they think PCs versus Macs. And while ultimately this doesn't really matter, I just thought it was a funny note in the larger conversation. Now, I want to take a step back and talk about just everything that we have gotten this week. Because I think that for as interesting as Microsoft's updates are, and they are interesting, what's even more interesting to me is the extent to which this really reinforces this idea of a new phase of integrated AI that we are moving into. Going back through the week, on Tuesday we got the announcement from Google that BARD is now fully integrated across Google Workspace apps, so it can take advantage of the information in your Google Drive, in your YouTube, your search history, your Gmail, in order to provide better contextual results. I said in that video previewing that that this was a major upgrade not because of some technology underpinning, but just because giving it access to one's personal data is likely to make it much more useful for that person's specific needs. 
At Amazon's Fall Heart event, we learned all about the new Alexa, which is powered by a custom-built Alexa LLM. This is designed, once again, to give Alexa much more power to actually understand the home environment that it's working in and to be able to interact with the user in natural language ways. One of the examples, again, that they gave was being able to say things like, Alexa, turn on the new light we just added, and Alexa being able to parse out what that actually meant. Now, because this is now powered by an LLM, Amazon is naturally worried a little bit more about hallucinations, and so initially this will only be available in the U.S., and they won't roll it out all at once. Also on Wednesday, we had OpenAI's announcement of Dolly 3. Now, this is one that bridges both technology novelty as well as this integration theme, given that they are promising that Dolly 3 itself is a performance upgrade over things like Midjourney, given that it can handle, as they say, significantly more nuance and detail, and not require the same sort of prompt engineering that you have with other systems because you can just interact with it through natural language. But it is part of this integration story as well, because it is, as they say, built natively on ChatGPT, and thus fluidly plugged into a system that already hundreds of millions of people use. Again, instead of having to set something up in Discord like you do for Midjourney, you just talk to ChatGPT as you normally would, getting the advantage of using it as a brainstorming partner for refining prompts, and then the results of the prompting happens through the ChatGPT interface as well. For many observers who are assessing how significant the Dolly 3 announcement was, it is this integration with ChatGPT, which is the biggest deal, even relative to any changes in quality versus what Stable Diffusion or Midjourney can offer right now. So that's an announcement on Tuesday, two announcements on Wednesday, and then on Thursday, in addition to this Microsoft Copilot event, there was also the big Made on YouTube event, which featured a slew of AI upgrades, including their Dream Screen feature, which allows people to put AI-generated video and images behind themselves in shorts, use AI to generate new ideas for content, or even find the right soundtrack. And all of this is happening in a new dedicated mobile creator experience. Once again, integration, integration, integration. So quite clearly, one of the big themes of all of these announcements is a new phase of AI, which is not just about racing to new higher performance technology, but about bundling it in user experiences that make it more useful and get it to a wider audience. However, there is another dimension of this week that's worth calling out as well. When Jeffrey Hinton left Google earlier this year, he argued that competitive pressure was creating new dangers as companies that had previously been responsible stewards of AI were now under too much pressure to release things fast regardless of the risks. That warning was echoed by Max Tegmark this week. The MIT professor and founder of the Future of Life Institute was interviewed by The Guardian and said, I felt that privately a lot of corporate leaders I talked to wanted a pause, but they were trapped in this race to the bottom against each other, so no company can pause alone. Further echoing that theme is an article from The Information about Jacopo Pantaleoni, a senior engineer at NVIDIA who had been there since 2001, only to leave this July, leaving much economic value to himself on the table because he realized that the world that he was building wasn't the one that he had wanted to help build. He said this market of machine learning, artificial intelligence, is almost entirely driven by the big players, Google's, Amazon's, Meta's. They have the enormous amounts of data and enormous amounts of capital to develop AI at scale. This was not the world I wanted to help build. Now, writes the information, Jacopo is dedicating his career to studying the unintended societal impacts of AI, including publishing a book on the topic this month. Its premise? The concentration of power in the hands of tech giants like Google is the real danger of AI, not the human-killing AI future being propagated in the press. So this is an interesting twist, where a person who had been in the belly of the beast of these companies is saying that something needs to give and government needs to get involved, not necessarily because we're all headed towards an inevitable extinction, but because the world is going to be too fully controlled by a small oligarchy of companies. It's hard not to look at the slate of news from this week and not see at least some evidence of that thesis. And yet, at the same time, and this is the damnable thing about the industry, it's also hard not to be pretty excited about all these new tools and new features that people like me and probably people like you are going to go use to be more productive and to create more things. That's what makes this policy challenge so hard, and that's what makes this such an interesting moment in technological history. Anyways, I'm sure we will get more announcements to go over soon, and I'm sure that it's not only integration progress that we're going to be seeing, Obviously, the next big battle is going to be around Google Gemini and whether it can actually meet and exceed GPT-4 and what that means for the rest of the industry. But we will wrap it there. And I will just ask if you are enjoying this content, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe. And if you are subscribed, I would so appreciate it if you would consider leaving a rating or a review. It makes a big difference and I really appreciate it. Thanks as always for your attention. And until next time, peace.